we wield the mighty razor sharp sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken word of God. Amen. It's a good place for an amen. amen. We believe in the salvation giving work of the cross, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, which is the good news of the gospel. We pray, praise, and support Israel. Amen. We are confessors of the word of God. We are doers of the word of God, and we are cheerful givers who believe in the abundant harvest. Amen. We believe in marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Amen. We are calling in the harvest of souls to God in our region. Amen. Welcome to the lighthouse. Welcome to the wetlands of New Mexico. Amen. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, we just praise you, God. Thank you for this day that you made. Thank you for each and every person that is here. We just thank you, Lord, that we're tuning up our, the ears of our hearts to hear. Let us hear what our visions are as we lead into those times of walking out our visions, Lord. For we will dream dreams and we will have visions, Lord. And you give them to us, Lord, and we walk them out in obedience to you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for what, what you're about to do here tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Please stand and sing with us. I am so excited about tonight. Let's get tonight started off right, okay?
Thank you, Lord, for your vision. Thank you, Lord, that we can always trust your vision. And you, Holy Spirit, are the light before us. It is an honor to advance the kingdom with you. Let us be hearers of your word and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Welcome to Vision Night. Uh, as, if you didn't know it was Vision Night, you do now. <laughs> so be sure and hear our vision and come back and visit us in the morning. We have service at 10 in the morning. I have a prophecy that came from Brother Kenneth Copeland, and since Misty and I partner with KCM Ministries, we receive this prophecy, and you can too through the prophetic impartation and activation in the anointing of the Lord that can come through being in the corporate gathering of the saints. That's now, that's us. Corporate gathering. And, and Brother Copeland shares, continue as you have been, one step at a time, going upward, upward. Nice, guys. Upward to the high ground as Moses climbed Mount Nebo. Once he stood upon that mountain, he could see all of the promised land. As we rise up, saith the Lord, and take that high place, stand on top of the high ground, we have advantage over all the enemy's forces over all his ideas, over all his plans. For as we take the high ground, the high ground of integrity, the high ground of manifested holiness and righteousness, the high ground in a place where we walk into the place and into that place because of that place wherein we are called. And staying on track, we're staying on track, staying on track watching, looking, and listening for more advanced orders, walking as soldiers in the army of the law. We are specialists. We are faith specialists. We are healing specialists. Glory to God. We are specialists in ministering the spirit of the living God, and we take that place that the Lord added to this ministry of walking as prosperity agents in the realm of the wealth of God. And as we took that place, of course, we received much persecution. But persecution doesn't do anything. You will kill it with love. You will kill it with joy. You kill it with praise and worship. And you don't even listen to it. Why? <coughs> Because you're on the high ground. You're in the high place, standing on top of the mountain, not crawling up the sides or wondering what's going to happen. We've taken the high ground and we're in the most precious place we've ever been in our ministry life. It's a place not only for honor, glory, and joy, but it's a place into which we're called. The Master Himself called us up to this place. Now we take advantage of the place over the enemy and we become a lighthouse from on high. Get that? We become a lighthouse from on high. A lighthouse of the love of God, building a place where love is king. Where people can come and can physically and emotionally feel the love of God when they step into this property. For this is the revival capital of the world. It is a place where love is flowing like melted snow coming from the top of a tall mountain and flowing down each side like a molten river of hot love. And it's flowing into the lives of people. And it's flowing throughout this whole area around here. Amen. It's flowing into other churches in this area. Amen. It's flowing through the city of Raton. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And we will know and understand more and more about this in the future for the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. Amen. But it's coming more rapidly than it ever has in our history. Glory be to God for it. We've climbed Mount Nebo and we're looking at the promised land. Amen. We're looking at the promised land. Amen. 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 So y'all walk in that prophecy and I'm, you'll hear it again Amen. if you stick around. Amen. 
I'm going to tell you a little bit about the tent meeting vision. I'm not going to really emphasize a lot about the tent meeting, but there is a prophecy over the tent meeting that was spoken over Monty, Sarah, me, and Misty. And it basically it's paralleling the lighthouse and the tent meeting. The tent meeting started in 2010, and the vision that would bring the, and with the vision, man, that's echoing, with the vision that it would bring the body of Jesus, his church, outside the four walls of the weekly gathering places in the Raton area. In the beginning, we thought the local churches would come out and serve the people on designated nights, but it has turned out that people from different churches are coming out to serve the people. It's people serving people. People serving people with the love of God, just like that prophecy was talking about. The tent meeting has grown from six nights the first year in 2010 to 16 nights last year in 2019, and that being our 10th year. Looking forward, we have this prophecy. The prof prophetic words were spoken over Monty, Sarah, Misty, and me together. Starting with that, both visions, lighthouse and tent meeting, God commands the provision to begin to manifest. We're going to dream dreams, certainly, about each other's. Clarity is going to come for what both the lighthouse and the tent meeting, for what this is going to be. The glory barn will be the destination, lining up with what Brother David prophesied in 2011 at the tent meeting. He prophesied what is happening here is like a peach seed, kind of ugly seed that will produce an amazing, beautiful fruit. Amen. And the fruit will put rat tone on the map. Amen. There's more to it than you know because the great awakening is here. Amen. The great awakening is the tool that is going to bring people from miles for healing, deliverance, and things like that. And there will be great provision for that. Amen. That's the glory barn or picture of what we think might, it might be. Amen. No doubt, no fear, no worry. The provision is for everything. Everything that both visions, lighthouse and tent meeting, need and what other visions, what other visions will have. God's got our back about our time. God's going to bring the people to help facilitate our dreams. Building cores are so important because if you have a really good core, you're going to have a really strong ministry. So both the lighthouse and the tent meeting will have that. Some of the people will interact in them. Make sure in our minds, and this is talking to the four of us, it was to make sure that we get each other's and facilitate each other. So these spoken words of God, our vision is the tents becoming more than just tents, a barn. The people increasing, the provision increasing, because with vision, there is provision. Amen. That's right. And that most of you here will be helping facilitate these visions of the lighthouse and the tent meeting. Amen. So visualize the glory barn to facilitate 1,100 people. Amen. With those 1,100, there will be the people to help serve and minister. Mm -hmm. The restrooms to facilitate, the kitchen and dining facilities, motels needed to house the additional travelers along with the locals that are drawn to this destination. Mm -hmm. The provision is everything, everything that both visions need. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. I'm excited already. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> We're just getting started. Um, it's so awesome how the Holy speaks to us. Amen. Um, Pastor Jim has mentioned the Victory Channel to you all. Um, it's something you can get streamed, and we have it on at our house. Um, it feeds our spirits. It changes the atmosphere, you know, having the word going. Um, as we go through the day, we'll hear different things that our spirit grabs a hold of. And there was a truth that the Holy Spirit, um, he, he wants to speak to us about. And he'll, he'll, he'll kind of tune you in a little bit. So one day, a few weeks back, that's exactly what happened. Um, I was walking through the house, heard something, and my spirit was arrested. And, and uh, I happened to mention it to Pastor Monty. And um, he said, 
I think we need to share that with everybody for vision night, amen? <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do quickly because we have a lot coming as well. So um, I heard a pastor teaching about um, division and it's different than I'd ever thought of it before. Um, and so we're going to look at it. So die vision, all right? That's what we're going to look at it tonight. Um, usually we think of the root word divide, and that's not wrong. But tonight we're going to look at it in a little different light for vision night. So um, the first thing we're going to do is look at the definition of vision. And I'm going to try to talk slow and clear so you guys can soak this in. I don't have any cool slides or anything. So... Um, so vision for, the, for what we're looking at it tonight, the definition we're going to use is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. Okay? The ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. Okay, so die, right? It's a prefix. It means two, twice, or double. So we're breaking the word apart. We're, it's die and it's vision. So it's two, twice, or double. Okay, so if you, if you break it down and put them together, put it together, it's two visions or double vision. Okay, it's amazing. So think about this in the natural. In the natural, if we're seeing double, there are problems, right? There are problems. And as a matter of fact, this isn't a huge big point, but there's an actual condition for double vision, and it's called diplopia. Am I saying that right? <laughs> Not important. It's a big word. Anyway, so here's the definition of double vision. You guys get this, all right? So it's a simultaneous perception of two images usually overlapping of a single scene or object. Lots of big words. Simultaneous perception of two images usually overlapping of a single scene or object. Okay, so here's the point. You can't see clearly. Check this out. This condition affects <laughs> balance mm -hmm. yeah. and movement. Yeah. Okay, so now, now we're going to think about this in the spiritual. We're going to break it down um, with the vision of, of the lighthouse and the purposes for what the Lord has called us all here for. So it's vital for us to have one vision to move forward with balance and with movement. We have to have one vision. We have to see clear and we have to have, we won't have the balance or movement the Lord's called us to. So the Lord has given our pastors vision. So it's important that we have the same vision. Amen. Amen. Um, Eric and Debbie shared with us with the leadership um, teaching that first we trust the leader before we have the vision. All right. And I believe all of us trust our pastors as leaders or we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so I feel like that's established. We trust them as leaders. Um, but because we're called to our pastors, leadership, we're called to the same vision. Amen? Amen. To one vision, the vision that the Lord has given them. It's come, it has to come from the Lord. Listen, God will not give two visions. He won't do it. So we choose to trust him and the vision he's given our pastors. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when you think of division, think of it that way. It's double vision. It's two vision. It's not clear. And, and we need to have that one vision to move forward with balance and movement. Amen. Amen. <laughs> They give me 15 minutes. Me. 15 minutes. <laughs> Do you believe in miracles? Luke chapter 4. Did you find it? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus speaking. Because he has anointed me, the Spirit of the Lord, this is Jesus speaking about God, his Father. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What is the gospel? It's good news. What's good news to somebody who's poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. When Jesus came, the Father anointed him to fulfill this mandate. When Jesus left this earth to be seated at the Father's right hand, he didn't take that anointing with him. He gave it to his church. Amen. Amen. So what do we do with it? We do what he did. Amen. Amen. Our mandate is what his mandate was. Amen. Amen. We should be setting captives free. Amen. Amen. We should be proclaiming to those that are poor. You don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. 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 To those that are sick, you can be well. That's right. That's our mandate. And that anointing is what breaks the yoke. Turn with me to Isaiah. Is that the next one on my list? <laughs> Isaiah, I'm not going to tell you how many I brought. <clears throat> but we're not going to use them all. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. It shall come to pass. <laughs> I love that piece of scripture. It didn't say it come to stay. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Whatever you're looking at, whatever you're going through, yeah. it come to pass. It didn't come to stay. Yeah. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders. That burden is the one that the enemy put on. If you'll read uh, up in uh, chapter 10 there, you'll see what he's talking about. But the burden was the burden that the enemy had placed upon them. And he said that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed. In the Hebrew, that word means utterly shattered. It's not broken so that it can be fixed. It is shattered into so many pieces you can't put it back together ever again. Because of the anointing oil. Because of the anointing. What, what changes the situation? We've been given authority. But you have to have anointing to make the authority work. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's what changes it. Turn with me to Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Oh, listen to me, people. The devil can't thwart what the church is set here to do. Amen. The devil can't stop the church. Amen. He can't. Amen. Jesus told Peter... At the revelation of who he was, he said, I'll build a church that the gates of hell will not prevail against. That's right. That means we win. Amen. 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 And the devil can't stop the church. Amen. The only organization that the devil can stop is the one that doesn't know who Jesus is. That's right. That's right. The church is built on the foundation of who Jesus is. Amen. That's what he told Peter. Peter said, Thou art the Christ. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but it's a revelation from my Father. Amen. And upon this rock, the revelation of who I am, I'll build a church that the gates of hell will not prevail against. The only church the devil can defeat is the one that don't know who Jesus is. That's right. Amen? Amen? Oh, man, that'd make it stomp Amen. the devil. Amen. <laughs> He can't defeat the church. Right. And you need to tell him that every day. Right. And declare with faith and boldness, I am the church. Amen. That's right. Amen. Mario Morello used to come to Christ for the Nations all the time, and he was one of the guest speakers. And one of his favorite phrases is this. He woke up every morning, and he said, Hey, devil. I am the Christian your daddy warned you about. <laughs> Get out of my way. That's how he started. That's how he started his day. Yeah. We're not supposed to be afraid of the devil. The devil's supposed to be afraid of us. 
No place in the Bible does it say. No place. No place. Every place in the New Testament where Jesus come in contact with the demon, they cried out for mercy. Amen. Have mercy on us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't torment us before our time. They was crying for mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. And we're the church. Jesus is the head. Amen. Where's body? Amen. And your head and your body should be going the same place, doing the same thing. Yes. Talk about double vision. <laughs> if your body ain't going where your head is. That's right. But we're supposed to be going the same place he is. Did you find Psalms 133? <laughs> Am I running out of time already? <laughs> blessed. <laughs> Behold, how good and how blessed it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. The anointing it's like the oil that they put on uh, Aaron's head and it run all the way down. Listen, the anointing starts with the head, but it don't stop there. Praise God. Amen. The anointing doesn't stop with the pastor, Amen. the associate pastor, Amen. the janitor, Amen. whatever your title is. Amen. The anointing covers the entire body. Amen. All of it is anointed. All of it is anointed. Amen. Amen? Yes. And with that anointing comes burden delivering, yoke destroying power. Amen. Amen? Amen? From the hem of the garment. From the hem of the garment you can get delivered. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen? It's all over the entire body. Amen? We thank God. We thank God for our pastors. We thank God for our pastors. And he has anointed them. But he's not the only one that God anointed. He can't do this by himself. Amen? That anointing has got to drip off of the beard, onto the garments, and clear to the hem. Every person in this room are to leave here saturated with the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And walk in it. Use it. It breaks yokes. It sets people free. It encourages the poor. Yes. Brings healing and deliverance. Yes. Amen. And that's us. Amen. And, and the gates of hell can't prevail against us. Amen. Amen. As long as we know who Jesus is. And then he goes on to say this. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. It's like the dew of Hermon. A dew is, is a strange commodity. <laughs> it's moisture. It softens. Amen? You can tell out on the ranch, you can tell when, when it gets dry, you walk across the ground, and it sounds like you're walking on potato chips. I mean, but once there's a really good dew, if there's a rain, if there's a snow, it moistens the grass, and it sounds different. Yeah. It sounds different. It sounds different. If you're under the anointing and the devil tries to step on you, it sounds different. It don't sound the same way as if you're dry as a shuck. If you're under the anointing and you're moistened by that dew, it sounds different when the devil tries to put his foot on you. It don't crinkle and scratch. It says, I'm a child of God. Amen. Get your big nasty foot off of me. 
You're supposed to be under my foot. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. You're out of place, devil. Get in your place. Get out of my face. If the devil's where he's supposed to be, he ain't in your face. He's under the sole of your foot. And that's all he should see. Amen. Amen. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference in the sound. But there's a quality. There is a quality to do. It's predictable. Do has a due point. It is predictable. Any weatherman can tell you this is the dew point. When the temperature and the humidity get to this point, dew will manifest. Not sometime. It's just like two plus two is four. It is exactly like two plus two is four. I looked up the formula today on my computer. I was going to bring it, but uh, it won't fit on the screen. <laughs> and, and I couldn't, I couldn't interpret all of the T's and B's and H's and R's and times five plus what, and it comes out to the dew point. But they can tell you exactly when that's going to happen. Exactly when that's going to happen. And he said that the anointing is exactly like the dew of Hermon. It is for sure. Amen. Every time, every time those things come together at the same place, the temperature, the humidity, and all of those things are exactly the same place. It's going to condense, and there's going to be moisture on the grass. Amen. Every time. And the anointing of God is just as sure. Amen. We haven't understood the formula. But it don't make God's anointing any different. It's still going to happen. That's right. Amen. If I can't interpret the formula, it's still going to happen. When the temperature and the humidity all come together at the same place, it's going to condense and there's going to be dew on the grass. And God's Word is exactly the same way. His promises, His provisions is the same way. And when we get to that place, God's not waiting. We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us. Amen. 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 When you come in here, have a temperature. Amen. Have some moisture. Amen. Don't be dry as an old shuck. Amen. Amen. We can't do what God wants us to do without the anointing. Because it's what breaks the yoke. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the pastor can't do it by saying, because the anointing don't just stay on the head. It runs all the way to the hem of the garment. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, <laughs> the lighthouse fixing to put the devil out of business in Colfax County. Amen. 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 We're going to put him on the run yes. in a hurry. Yes. Amen. 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 Together. Yes. Together, because what makes all of this work? Are you keeping time? <laughs> I, I, I heard his gun cock, so I don't know what that means. But <laughs> it says in the first verse, "Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together." in unity Amen. what makes the anointing work Thank you. is unity Amen. Amen. Amen look we're all in this together we are. we're going to make it together or we're not going to make it Amen and it's unity we all got problems we all got problems in Jesus' teachings and his parables, he talks about a man who planted seed in his field and his servants come in the next day and say, or when the crop had come in, said, didn't you plant good seed? And he said, sure, I planted good seed. And he said, but there's, there's, there's Dardanelles in the wheat. And he said, there's an enemy. 
there's an enemy. And he'll plant stuff in your field that didn't come from God. That's right. It didn't come from God. But he'll plant it in your field in the stealth of the dark. When you're not looking, he'll plant stuff. And listen, he didn't skip a single field. There's not a single one of us that ain't got something in our field that wasn't planted by God. Every one of us has got something to overcome. Amen? All of us. Amen? Amen. I fight my demons, you fight your demons, and we fight together. Amen? That's right. Amen? That's right. That's right. Instead of criticizing one because we don't have that particular demon, <laughs> what difference does it make? <laughs> it don't make any difference. Right. If your demon is green and mine is blue, <laughs> it's not from God. That's right. And what we got to do is encourage one another, stay in faith and unity, encourage and hold each other up because that's how this process works. That's right. The atmosphere is full of the moisture of God. Amen. When all of the ingredients get right here, it's going to condense in this place Amen. and there's going to be dramatic changes. Amen. 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 I want to dance around the church with Megan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, I, I'm not going to be happy till I do. Amen. So I done told God I wasn't going to heaven till I did. Amen. So we got to do something. Amen. 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 And it's collective. Yes. Yes. It's all of us together. Because the anointing starts at the top, but it goes all the way to the hem. Amen. And that's what breaks the yoke. Amen. 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 <laughs> Good evening. He just got warmed up. <laughs> and I can tell you that last fall he did the entire deal. Go look it up. We have it somewhere, right? We have it. Brother David was just getting warmed up. We were fixing on having dew point here pretty quick. <laughs> if we could figure out that formula. But anyway, well, good evening. Thank you for having us. And uh, we've heard some powerful truths already tonight, and we haven't had Monty and Sarah up here yet. I mean, Jim and Misty's provision is vision. Amen. Double vision creates imbalance yeah. and movement issues. And then certainly, like I just said, Brother David's anointed talk on anointing, right? Yes. As many of you know already, and I think everybody here that I see has been here before, that the Lighthouse Church is a little different than other churches that you've been in, right? Why is it named the Lighthouse? I just want everybody just for a minute to close your eyes, and I just want you to picture a lighthouse. Just picture a lighthouse in your mind and then go ahead and open your eyes. How many people have ever seen a real lighthouse? Wow, I thought it'd be more, really. Okay, but everybody, did everybody have a vision in their mind of what a lighthouse looks like? Even you lowlanders from New Mexico here? <laughs> Well, I grew up on the East Coast, and I've been up and down the East Coast from the tip of Florida to the tip of Maine, and I have seen lots of lighthouses. And you know what? A lighthouse is a lighthouse. That's right. It may look a little different, and in your mind, everybody had a little bit of a different picture of a lighthouse. But raise your hand if you thought it was tall. Yeah. Raise your hand if there was I don't, light. <laughs> Raise your hand if it was by water. <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing considering very few of you ever saw a real lighthouse. Right. But you know what? 
when God looks down here and he looks at his church, he sees his churches differently, but they all have some of the same things. That's and that's what we have here. Amen. Okay? All of us have been brought here by God. Right. Our lighthouses all look a little different. Our demons, like Brother David said, all look just a little different. But we are all here in this place at this time because of God's vision that he is pouring into not just the pastors of this church, but each and every one of you. Remember your lighthouse? It's planted by water. The living water. The living truth. There's a reason why God, when Jesus told the woman at the well, I come to bring you living water, so never again shall you thirst. But let's talk a little bit about the lighthouse. And Monty has covered this in, in certain depths. But the lighthouse is different from the bottom up, the inside out, even with its order of service. So the first thing that we start with every service is the shofar. Do we have the shofar? <laughs> Thank you. Some some people may not have heard that, but <laughs> that is the shofar, and that is a call to battle. Amen. Not only are we called here to worship, we are called to be be prepared for battle. The next thing we do is Jim. Typically, it's Jim comes up and reveals a truth from God's word. Why? To set that spirit of truth. So we can use that as a platform to build upon for the rest of the service. Right. And then how about our wonderful praise team? Amen. Amen. You know, we don't thank them nearly enough. <laughs> but they come in here every Thursday night and practice so that they can lead us in praise. Amen. It's one of two times that we corporately open our mouths and speak God's word in song and then later in the service when we read the scriptures when we talk about God's word. How many people have ever been in a church where you, where you corporately speak God's word out loud? I had never been before. Okay. And then obviously the message that is brought by the pastors, the various people that stand up here, but typically Monty and Sarah, and they speak God's word. And that is built upon the shofar, the nugget of truth, the praise, and it's a buildup. And then, of course, we close with Sarah reading the declarations of blessings over us. Do you know why she does that? Number one, God laid it on her heart. It's an absolute passion that she has, but it is to encompass you. It is to help you put on the full armor of God to go out and do battles, and it's a reminder that God has you yeah. every step of the way. Psalms 127.1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Amen. We are here tonight to reveal the fact that part of the vision of the lighthouse is not just this building. That we are getting ready to kick off the vision that has been given to Monty and Sarah and Jim and Misty about a brand new building right out here. And if you have seen earlier this week, the survey has been done. The land has been surveyed. We're getting ready to purchase some additional land and begin the vision of a larger church to encompass everything that God has promised this church. And just like everybody had a slightly different thought on what the lighthouse looks like, we don't have a clear vision yet of what the building looks like other than it's going to come, and it's going to come very soon. Do we have a couple of pictures? We have no idea if that's what the church is going to look like. 
Don't get too excited. Get really excited. <laughs> but get really excited. Yes, Monty, thank you for cutting me off there. I appreciate that. No, but get really excited. <laughs> That is abundant harvest right there. Um, be, be, be careful what you say from the pulpit. Uh, about four or five months ago, I talked about I always like the centerpiece, and so I had a piece of pie one time, and I took it out of the middle. So my wife, before she left for St. Louis last week, makes this cake, puts it in the freezer, says, don't touch it. It's for hungry hearts. So I had a cake in my freezer. I never touched it. I took it to hungry hearts. Some individuals cut the center out of the cake and then sent my wife the picture. <laughs> it was not me. I had an alibi. I was walking with my pastor. <laughs> I was there. None of that's true. We're running over. I don't want to. I want to take any more time. In fact, we have real cake and stuff back there here shortly, and I don't want to be. But I want you to begin thinking about the church. It's coming. It's going to be real. We're starting kicking off with the land, our new building project. Okay. I'm going to close. And uh, Proverbs 18.22 says, A man who finds a good wife has favor from God. Amen. I can tell you that I am anointed, overwhelmed from the top of my head to the bottom of my garments uh, with favor from the Lord. And now here's Deb. <laughs> well, thank you. That was very a very sweet introduction. <laughs> so... Um, what I want to add tonight, um, but there's been so much that what I, what I have to add, I'm going to say this and Monty's going to scowl at me. What I have to say is not that significant in my mind, okay? In my mind, because I have trouble with self-esteem. I don't know if anybody else out there does, but I struggle with that. And I think what I have to offer is not that important. And I can tell you, three years ago, you would have not found me up here unless he drugged me up by my hair, okay? God has changed that in me. Um, <clears throat> he, has, he has shown me that whatever insignificance I may feel, it is important for the kingdom of God. And each one of you is a part of this vision for the lighthouse. There, there are so many things that are going to happen in the next year with the lighthouse. And I want you all to kind of, I, I don't know about anybody else, but my, my hairs are standing up tonight. You know, the, the spirit of God is in this building and he is building the excitement. So grab on to that. Grab that anointing that Brother David talked about. Let's go on. I'm getting off track. Um, in 1 Corinthians 12, um, it talks about, 12, 12, it talks about the body of Christ. And let's just read um, three of those. I'm, I pulled some verses out because they, they cut our time to very short, and Eric took all my time. So, so let's look at um, 12, 12, to, yeah, 12, 12 to begin with. Just as the human body is one, though it has many parts that come together to form but one body, so too is Christ. Let's go on to 18. For by one spirit we are immersed and mingled into one body. Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, eight, yeah. go on to 18. I'm sorry. But God has carefully designed each member, each member, and placed it in this body to function as he desires. You all have a place here. Don't forget that. Don't diminish any, anything that God is calling you to do. And then 27. You are the body of the anointed one. Brother David brought this up. And each of you is unique. And what's that word? Vital. You are unique and vital part of it. Okay? We are... It, it, go back and read 12, 12 through 27. Um, because it, it's so important. It talks about, you know, the eye is no more important than the ear. Okay? Each job that, that God has called you to do, and he has called you, every one of you, okay? We can, up here in between our ears, the six inches is, our, is the biggest playground for the devil. Okay? He's going to tell you, oh, nobody really cares whether you do that or not. I can tell you... You walk into this building every Saturday night or Sunday morning, and it's clean, right? 
that's important, okay? That's important that there's toilet paper in the bathroom, right? Okay, no job in this building, in this body, is less important than another. It's all vital. It, it's unique and vital. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close up here. We are one body brought together by the Holy Spirit. Each one of you bring unique giftings and talents. There's people out here that, that hunker can, can walk out and put two pieces of wood together and they look absolutely beautiful and they're square and they're smooth and it's just amazing. Eric can cut a perfect square in a cookie. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> there are unique giftings and talents. Most of them are necessary, but anyway, <laughs> there are unique giftings and talents that, that this body needs. Get excited about your giftings and talents, okay? <laughs> Just stomp on the devil like, like Brother Dave was, was saying a minute ago. Stomp on that devil when he tells you that your giftings and talents are not important. Okay, you have a purpose in this, in this kingdom. This kingdom, we're talking northeastern New Mexico, okay? There are people that you and I both know, may not know the same people, but you, that you know, that I know, that need to be here, that need to know the love of God. And by us being, you know, tromped down by the devil and letting the devil put us under his foot, we're not able to reach those people. I forgot to play my Domino's video. Let's play that real quick. And then I'm going to get off here because I think our 10 minutes are up. Look at this video. As, as these dominoes are, are being knocked over, think about what would happen if one of those dominoes was taken out and didn't do its job. As it comes around, you know, we're, we're following one pattern here, okay? Watch closely now as we enter here. There's multiple dominoes. Look how that entire thing would change. Think about that for a minute. If you stopped one domino, a whole section of that beautiful domino sculpture would have changed, right? That one whole corner of dominoes would not have been affected had that domino been taken out, had that domino chose not to listen to the calling that God had on his or her life. So don't, don't let Satan tell you that you are not important, okay? Stand up and, and use the calling and giftings that God has. Get up off the floorboards, okay? Amen. Okay. Amen. I'm glad y'all came tonight. I really am. Um, there's a reason that I had Jim and Misty, Brother David, Eric and Debbie share. Look, guys, it takes everyone with unique giftings. Okay, Debbie, that was, wasn't that good? Wasn't that good with all the dominoes? If one's out of place, it doesn't, it won't accomplish everything, right? Now, the gentlemen are going to be uh, handing out little booklets, okay? Now, please take one per family. Uh, take, I mean, <laughs> I printed as many as I could. Guys, this is big for me. <laughs> to be this organized, to have this. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and as you guys look at this, Kitty may recognize the cover because she gave that to me. And I took a picture of it. Where's Kitty? She is. <laughs> I always look for you over here. <laughs> and, and I took a picture of that, and the Lord, I had the picture. And so that's what's on the cover. Uh, and if anyone needs more, we, we do have some extras. That's good. Praise God. Does anyone else need one? Would it be easier if you had an extra one? Just raise your hand. Each will give, yep, yep. If, if anyone needs another one, make sure you grab a hold of one, okay? Isaiah 58, 11, the first part, the Lord will guide you always, amen? And he is guiding us, I believe that. On the first page, Lighthouse Vision 2020, in Habakkuk, I mean, Proverbs 29, 18. Well, there's no vision people perish. I preached on that many times. Guys, we're going to have vision. Why? So we can flourish. Yeah. We, you know, we don't perish. We flourish. Amen. In Habakkuk 2, 1 through 4. 
I will stand my watch and set myself on the ramport and watch to see what he will say to me. The Lord has been speaking a long time. A long time about this place, okay, about this church. Guys, when, when I didn't even know where Habakkuk was, he was talking about this. Amen? And what I will answer when I'm corrected. Verse 2, then the Lord answered me and he said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. That's what I tried to do with this. Okay? Write the vision and make it plain on tablets. Now listen to this, that he may run who reads it. As you read this, you're going to run. To what? To your calling. Whatever your calling is, whatever domino piece you are, be there because you're going to affect everyone else. Amen? These folks did a good job of setting it up, huh? I didn't have to say a thing. I really didn't. Amen? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. This is the appointed time. This is the appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. Listen to this. But the just shall live by his faith. Amen. 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 By his faith. In John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Listen. Without him, we can do nothing. What are we here for? To promote Christ. To promote Christ. To promote Christ. Now, lots of different ways. But at the end of the day, if you want to walk away with anything, we're going to preach the good news to this region. Yeah. He's more than good enough. Yeah. He's more than good enough. I don't have to come up with something. I already have him. Why? Because he has me. J just give what you got. Because he is more than good enough. Amen? Amen? That next page is, you can read it later, okay? It just gave some, guys, I missed a lot. I, I'm not this kind of guy. I, I'm looking forward. I mean, the back stuff, I could tell you amazing stories how God spoke to me in dreams, visions. He gave me a dream of me riding in a Cadillac car with Jim and Misty, okay? Starting a church in the south of town when I had just met Jim. I knew I was supposed to start a church, and all of a sudden, I'm supposed to start with them. And it came from a dream. And I've seen a vision of a, of a building. It's the next building, just so you know. Yeah. See, I haven't seen this building. Every time I ask the Lord to show me this next building, this church, you know what He shows me? He shows me the people. He shows me the faces that I see. He shows me the souls we're reaching, okay? That's all I need to see. Amen. The rest of it He'll take care of. Amen? All right. Present to future. This is where I am. That's the next page over. Present to future. Psalm 127, 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. He's got to build it. If he wants it, he's got to build it. It's up to him. It's up to me to believe. Amen? It's up to him <laughs> to accomplish it. I like this scripture. I'm going to find it real quick. At least I think I am. You don't have it, and it's okay. It's Hebrews 11. I've preached on it recently. And if I put it in the right version, it'll read like I'm thinking. There it is. Through faith's power, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled them into reality. Listen, our faith has to fasten on to God's promises to pull it into reality. Amen? Because he's the one building it, right? I don't want to labor in vain. I just believe him. Amen? All right. The Lord has released us to begin the process of a building a new building. The Lord spoke that we are a refuge for many people moving into this region seeking him. That is a word confirmed. A refuge in this region. Amen? All right. The Lord has said that the people are coming, and what has started as a trickle will become a great flood. Okay. We believe having a new building facility that will hold three to 400 people will be necessary to minister to those coming. 2 Kings 3, 15 through 17. Read it in the Amplified. Listen. 
But now bring me a minstrel. Praise is important, by the way. And while the minstrel played, the hand and power of the Lord came upon Elisha, verse 16. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Make this dry brook bed full of trenches. We're digging trenches right now. We're digging trenches right now. For the Lord, thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind or rain, yet that ravine shall be filled with water. So you, your cattle, and your beasts of burden may drink. Listen. I don't care what I see with my natural eyes. I believe what he told me. If you look back at, at the last 20 years, that's what I've been doing. Believing what he told me. I didn't have to see it. Guys, I didn't see lots. I had no idea. And every time I tried to think about what would be, it never worked out like I thought. But it was always better. It was always better. E even this booklet. Guys, I had a bunch of paper stapled together. <laughs> And he had a nice pretty book with the lighthouse. <laughs> Amen. It's always better. It's always better. The Lord said to expand our territory. And we believe there will be many ministries birthed from the lighthouse church. I'm not even giving. Now look at the next page. I missed some ministries too. I knew I would. Lord forgive me. I shouldn't have spoke that, but I did. Uh, carrying hands. I, I'm sorry, Jeannie. Current lighthouse ministries. Look at them all. And there's more I missed. So praise God. Future ministries, ministry of the Lord is stirring people. These are just the ones I heard about. All of these you're looking at, you're seeing in that next page. All these things. Listen, how, how, man, how are you going to do all that? I'm not. I'm going to believe God. And he'll provide the person. He'll provide the, 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 the funding, the provision for the vision. Amen? It's not up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to us to believe and then obey. Whatever he says, do. Amen? When I say training center, that's what I saw in my dream. It was a training center. I saw it. I went inside of it, walked around, got ready. That was in a dream. I've seen it. I know what's coming. Hmm. There's spiritual training. There's practical training. She's going to, she doesn't need it. She wrote it. <laughs> you know, um, it's important to me. So he's the visionary and I'm the detail person and we need those balances and we have them all over our body. And it's beautiful when we work together. And something that's very much always been on our hearts is that there are so many daily life things that have been lost in, in these past decades that people don't know how to do life and God wants us to flourish in every aspect of our life and so um, we see people who have abilities in carpentry in cooking in child care in relation we see these people coming forward and teaching our people how to do the basic things of life <laughs> the things that have been lost because God doesn't want us to be just okay in one area he wants them all okay and so part of that vision is in the natural in helping people recover that which has been lost and helping them learn how to flourish in basic things and I know I'm looking out here and I see all these talents mm. I know people have mm -hmm. and I know the Lord is stirring in you whether it be a spiritual or a physical ministry I know the Lord is stirring it in you you have a gift in that area it excites you and and he's stirring that and then there are people there are children Children, there are youth, there are young adults, and all the way to the elderly, there are people who need what we have. Amen. They need to know how to do things. They need to know that they're loved. They need to know how to love. Amen. They need to know how to be in a relationship in a healthy way. They need to know how to manage their finances. I mean, all from, from the Lord leaves nothing out. From the beginning to the end, He wants us to flourish. And so that training center includes those types of ministries. Amen. Amen. Again, you can read through this. I want you, you're going to take it home. That way you can read it and you can run. Amen. Amen. We were told from the beginning that the lighthouse would pray, praise, and support Israel. Since our inception, we have tied 10% of the lighthouse ties offering to Israel as a church body. We believe that as we bless Israel, we will be blessed and the Lord has kept his promise. Right. Amen. Yes. I will bless those who bless thee. I will curse those who curse thee. That's in Genesis 12, 3. We believe that. Mm. 
The vision of the new facility is only one step in advancing the vision that the Lord will use to accomplish His purposes in Christ. We're advancing His kingdom in this region and preparing for the influx of people the Lord is calling here in the end days. And that Psalm 89:19 in the NLT, long ago you spoke in a vision to your faithful people. He's always speaking. Be listening. Amen? He's always speaking. Be listening. You said, I've raised up a warrior. I've selected from him, uh, him from the common people to be a king. That's talking about King David. Amen? Yeah. Mm. God in his mercy has given us vision. Vision to follow his voice and arrive at where we are right now, but also vision to keep advancing his kingdom in our region. This vision will transcend our time here. It will transcend our time here. God will use this ministry after we're gone to continue to draw people to himself. If you think people aren't going to be saved once we're raptured, you're wrong. They're going to be. And the vision of the lighthouse and of this region, the ministry in this region, will reach people after we're gone for him. See, it goes beyond us. Amen? Amen. He told me this. He said, every heart matters to me. Every single one. Okay? Every single one matters. And it's Jesus is going to change them. We are to be known by the love that we have for one another. And as we are doers of the word, we will advance the kingdom in ourselves, which will in turn advance the kingdom of God in our region. Listen, he changes me so that his kingdom is advanced in me. If it's advanced in me, then I can affect someone else. Amen? As my soul prospers, as my mind, will, and emotion come into agreement with God and His Word, I prosper. I'm successful growing in Him. I'm successful in everything else. Amen? Amen. All right. I gotta get my notes now, real quick. I'm almost there. I set myself on a time limit, too. <laughs> Let's go to Psalm 27, 14. Come on. While he's looking, I want to just mention also that as a body, um, I look at all of you and I see family. Amen. And every family has a culture. It's kind of just the way they flow and function together and what their thing is. Every family has a thing. It might be camping. It might be, um, I don't know, it might be watching movies. One of our things is watching movies. <laughs> this body has a culture. And that first, when you first walk in the door you feel the love and that is something we want to promote that is something we want to grow in is our ability to love each other and share that love with the world with every person who comes in here and share it with the world because that world out there does not know what love is and that world out there is in pain it is hurting and as brother David said our job is to bind up the broken hearted Amen. well it starts here we love each other. We give each other room to grow. It's okay that we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. If you go looking for a perfect church, you are going to be disappointed because we're all in it. And that's okay. There's room to be where you're at and grow out of that. And we want to support each other in that and encourage each other in that and be there for each other because we're better together. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. If you take anything away, okay. The lighthouse is going to promote Christ in this region. If you take one thing away, if you don't remember one thing, we're going to promote Christ in this region. He's more than enough. Amen. In Psalm 27, 14, and in the Passion, it says, here's what I've learned through it all. This is King David. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting, for He will never disappoint you. Amen? Amen. All right, you're going to hear now Pastor Terry Sparks, okay? He sent us a word. I want you to listen to this word. And then praise team, I want you to come up. Good evening, Lighthouse Church. It's an honor to be with you today. Uh, I'm delighted that Pastor Monty reached out to me and asked me to pray about things that would specifically help impact your community. And uh, I believe that God is in your midst. There is no doubt about it. Uh, the amount of love uh, 
that I sense when I come among you is really outstanding. I've been to, I uh, go to a lot of churches and around a lot of people, but I very feel very welcome there and uh, feel the love and the honor and the support. You have an unusual gift there. I've got tremendous leadership that uh, I've grown to love. Pastor Monty and Sarah and Jim and Misty have just uh, done so much more, and I know that there's, there's so many other, if I start trying to quote, I'll forget, but God bless you, every single one that is involved in the leadership team there. And I look forward to coming to be with you very soon. But uh, pray for us. We're headed to Saudi Arabia, and we won't be able to uh, put anything on social media about our trip. Um, I was asked by the...